next item is the Local Government Association Tasmania General Meeting. Now it is 7 o'clock. We are probably in for a long one. Okay, we'll, another one, we'll do another one and then we'll, we'll see how we're going after that. So the Local Government Association Tasmania General Meeting, for those playing along at home, the, it's on page 40. And um, in this motion, um, basically what we're doing is asking the councillors to tell uh, to direct me how to vote at the LGAT meeting, which is to be held next month. Um, do we want to, how do we want to do this? The motion reads, oh, it's up on the screen. The council, uh, the council advised the mayor regarding voting at the upcoming LGAT general meeting as follows. Do we want to move to discuss someone so we can do this? Move to discuss from Councillor Midgley, seconded by Councillor Westwood. All those in favour, please say aye. aye. Those against, motion carried. Uh, so do we want to talk about planning authorities first? Any passionate views for or against? Um, at the moment, my, my plan would be no, but does anyone want to speak um, passionately for it? To start with, Councillor Fox. Um, as one of the fastest growing municipalities, and I think we have so many planning decisions coming before us, um, a lot of the criteria they suggest, I mean, we'd, we'd end up handing a lot of responsibility to someone who hasn't got the experience that we have um, we, and hasn't got the planning staff and the calibre of staff that we have. And I can understand it from a smaller council that they might not have those skills and they might not have those staff and they might not have the experience. But as a Kingborough councillor, I would vote no to this recommendation. Anyway, let's, to try and avoid long debate, um, just, if anyone thinks we should, um, speak now. Councillor Westwood, are you going to speak for? Yes, um, yes I um, quite like this um, motion. Um, I found it quite difficult when I was elected to council to become an instant member of the Kingborough Planning Authority. Um, I certainly rely very heavily on the recommendations of our staff um, and I find planning is a very complex um, area which um, our planners have university degrees to be able to um, do. And I, I'm not sure what the answer is, but I do certainly um, relate to a comment in here which, which refers to wearing two hats. And um, I find sometimes as a member of the planning authority, I am bound to make a certain decision based on the act that I know full well the community might not necessarily support. Um, I guess that works, works the other way around as well, uh, but I can relate to this and, yeah, I don't mind the idea of, of someone else doing it. Councillor Reid. Um, I've got a question which I don't know whether you can answer or not, just following on from what Councillor Fox mentioned earlier. I was reading this as if um, our council staff, um, with their qualifications in that relevant area, would still make an assessment, but then the decision would be made by an independent panel that is appointed. Is that how... Am I reading that process correctly? Uh, well, Mr Arnold, what did you, how did you read it? Uh, through you, Mr Mayor. That's exactly, exactly how I read it, Councillor Wright. Thank you. If that's the case, then I do support this um, because I believe that it is very, very difficult for us at times and I can think of many occasions over the last um, eight or nine years where we have been placed in difficult situations because we do wear two hats. And it is always... I've tried to separate that as much as possible and I have um, had to then... Uh, I've been forced to vote for things that I do not agree with and it's very difficult for the community to understand that. Um, and I've also seen situations where councillors haven't um, separated the roles like that and they have allowed their opinion on whether they like something or don't like it coming to it and have voted accordingly. And that is a very messy situation to deal with and that's where we end up with appeals and appeals and appeals. So the idea of separating the, the two I think is a sound one and I would really like to see us 
support this and I would really like to see this debate play out at Legat and what the state government's response to this would be. Clearly it, it is underway in other jurisdictions and it has worked and I think that um, we would be doing ourselves a disservice if we didn't at least allow the debate to take place. Okay, uh, given that we now have thought it's going to be pretty clear, uh, you, can, you can speak on either direction now. Councillor Court over and Councillor Mitchell. Thanks, Mayor. So very briefly, I don't want an independent panel. I think councillors are capable of wearing two hats. They've done it for years in Kimbra, and I think that's actually quite a good way of making sure that you don't end up with a position of, um, I guess, unelected and faceless panels making decisions uh, that are unaccountable to the elected, to the, you know, the population that can elect them. I think that we have an inbuilt mechanism in democracy to um, remove you know, people that we think are making faulty decisions that aren't in accordance with the planning scheme, and, and that's called the elections, and, and they're in October of 2022. So because I don't want an independent panel, just checking with you, Mayor, that means I do not want to provide as an alternative the establishment of an independent development assessment panel to determine a permit application, and therefore I'm correct in thinking I should be voting no. I'm asking you to vote no. Thank you. Councillor Midgley and then Councillor Street. Thank you, Mayor, and thanks other councillors for sharing both sides, which I do sit on both sides of the fence in this, but I am interested to hear it's staffs. It's, it's not helpful, but I am interested. I'm leaning more to know, but I am interested to hear um, very knowledgeable staff around the table um, in regards to the risks that they see us in voting. Just yes. so happens we have the former CEO of Elga here, Ms. Stevenson. Um, this is certainly not a new topic, and in fact, uh, in my previous life, I took a very similar debate. Um, to a mayor's workshop or a general meeting. I can't remember which one now. Um, and the rationale at the time was uh, the feedback we got in a post-election environment from new councillors who felt very torn about their ability to represent the community uh, while wearing the very um, straight ruled planning hat. Um, in terms... Uh, in terms of benefits, I think it does free up councillors' time to dedicate it more to the strategic land use planning aspects, which I think is what shapes communities, not the development uh, applications alone. Um, on, the, on the other side, some of the issues raised um, by other elected members from other councils in previous debates included the fact that Local knowledge meant you could influence the conditions um, of applications in a way that might not be possible for, for someone working on a regional or a statewide basis. They wouldn't necessarily um, be able to nuance um, the permits. Um, I, there are different models and some of them work better than others. I certainly think um, there needs to be a local government voice in any panel. Uh, not necessarily the council who've, who've got a, an application before a panel. Um, but it does mean that councillors, if, if they're not having to consider the DA, they can be advocates for or against an application. So um, that, that's really the two sides of it. It can work. Um, it needs to be the right model. Councillor Street. That's a very good answer. Councillor Street. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, look, I agree with Councillor Cordover on this one. Um, and I've said it a hundred times before that in planning matters, there are always matters um, to do with the planning scheme on which reasonable minds might differ. Um, and so I think it's important that, that councils have a role to play in terms of um, making decisions where reasonable minds might differ and using local knowledge and using the feedback of the community to make those decisions on matters where reasonable minds might differ. There's no doubt that there are clear-cut parts of the planning scheme. Um, you either meet an offset or you don't meet an offset. Um, you either meet a height limit or you don't meet a height limit. Um, but where we talk in terms of um, development intensity and um, what's a reasonable use for an area, um, these are things where, where you know, there is a, a bell curve of opinion um, 
and we get put on council to make a decision across that bell curve and people vote for us based on where they think we're going to sit and where we tell them we're going to sit. And I think that that's really important. Um, and it would concern me to remove that to an independent, albeit professional panel, where ratepayers and residents don't necessarily have that input into, into where they would like decisions to go um, on those matters where reasonable minds might differ. Um, so for that reason, I'd vote against um, investigating this further. Councillor Wass. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you, I also support the no on this particular item. Planning at times is not easy, but at the end of the day it shapes the municipality. Now we talk about Looper, the land use planning. It would have a land use planning and we'd have no effective tool to administer it. We talk about our planning scheme. We would have a planning scheme, but we have we would have no effective tool to ensure that the planning scheme was met. From time to time, we have set strategic directions for the development of this municipality. No point doing that if all of a sudden we're no longer going to be involved in planning issues because planning issues, regardless, will go their own way without any reference back to us and where we want to take and where, the, most importantly, the community want us to take the municipality into the future. When we start looking at costs, we can look at the additional costs. Does that mean how many um, of these special boards, if you like, are going to be established? Is there going to be one for each municipality? Is there going to be one for each two, for two councils? We're talking about a legal and a public administrator background chair. Don't come cheap. Two or more specialist members, I take planners, won't come cheap may include a local government and or community representative. So if you're paying the others, you've got to pay them. All of a sudden, it's going to cost us the same as it costs councillors' allowances to set up this board. From the general public, what do they want? Do they want someone to control and administer going forward or do they want a council? My suggestion is they might well want the planning board and get rid of the council because the council having no effective uh, operation into the future that they want of this municipality. We talk about the future directions. We've spoken about years to come to keep away from uh, ribbon development through our towns. If we set up a board and that was to occur, we can stand back, we can yell all we want, the community can yell all they want, and it will go ahead. Sure, they will get appeals the same as we do. But at the end of the day, I believe that we vote with the planning scheme, and I think it's up to each and every councillor then to explain it to our community residents why and how you did that particular vote. And the more and more I see of this, I think it's a, an escape by one or more councillors who really find planning too hard. If they find planning too hard, perhaps they should vacate as councillor and let someone else in who wants to do the work. Councillor Bastide. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I'll be supporting a no vote on this. Uh, I keep coming back to that uh, the fence at uh, down at Kingston Beach, which under the, all the planning rules was disallowed. They spent, was it 26 pages of why heritage architects and thank goodness sensible councillors who knew the area and knew that it wouldn't be destroying it were able to get it through. Now, I think that's one of the things. We know our area. We, we might not know, I might not know every street in Taruna, uh, but I might know every street on Broody Island. You know, I mean, we, we know our area. And I think it's very important that the councillors are the ones that make this decision so that we can say we were part of it. Good. Thank you, Councillor Lester. Um, any other contributions? I, I'm going to. We, we're only going to vote at the end. But so, what I've heard here is the majority are a, a no on this. So when we move, because we've just discussed, we're going to. Someone's going to move a no, um, and uh, and then we'll we'll vote on that. Okay. Just do a quick informal show of hands for the um, yes. Raise your hand if you're a yes to voting for this. Yes. 
because there's only two. If you're a no, please raise your hand. Yeah, so we've got a pretty heavy majority for no. Um, future gaming res reg legislation exposure draft. Um, I'm pretty, actually, I'm just going to let, I tried to, let's just see how it goes. Anyone want to speak for a yes? Councillor Cordova. <laughs> Thanks, Mayor. Oh, no, I've learnt. <laughs> we want, um, so I, I moved a, a motion earlier to try and get us to get um, the community's opinion of Pokey's engagement. Um, I happen to know that there has been some polling done in Kingborough and it's uh, unequivocally, overwhelmingly, people actually don't want Pokies in their pubs and clubs in this municipality and the evidence is overwhelming that Pokies cause harm. Um, they're an absolute scourge and they're a detriment um, they're a detriment for not just the, the people who suffer from them, but also the businesses as well. Um, and it siphons great amounts of money away from this state and onto the mainland. In response to this question, I, I actually wanted that consultation to take place because I knew that at some stage or another, we will be faced with this community interest test. And as Legat has pointed out, according to this future gaming legislation exposure draft, the background comments, council is one of the key stakeholders. So I'm very interested in seeing us um, hold the government to account and make sure that they honour their commitment uh, to give us our five week consultation period. My question is, have I interpreted that correctly? That um, what were the alternatives? Could we get more than a five week consultation period or five weeks was all they were offering? Or what's the background of this? Uh, Ms Stevenson might be the most qualified. Ms Stevenson. Uh, through you, uh, Mayor. Uh, the com consultation and communication protocol between local government and state government provides for a minimum of five weeks consultation on legislation, so that's where the five week period has come from. There is no reason why they couldn't offer more they do for some other legislation. Thanks, and so we're not ruling out getting more by asking the government to at least stick to their end of the bargain by giving us at least five. So we're not, um, we're not losing any opportunities, but we're just getting what was, what was committed to us in the first place. So I'm a yes, I think. Does anyone a no? Yeah, I'm a no. All right. Uh, Councillor Grace and then Councillor Westwood if Councillor Grace doesn't cover it. Councillor Grace. Um, I, I just think um, it's discriminating against other betting facilities. I mean, you, you vote against the gambling machines and uh, you're not going to vote against the horse racing or Kino or any of that stuff. And... I must confess, I don't mind throwing a two, two bob or two in the pokies. Um, I think there's certainly room for a bit of review, particularly the way things are going at the moment when I'm losing. You know, I don't mind when I'm winning, but um, uh, but no, look, um, in fairness, um, um, we never used to have the poker machines many years ago. We used to have to drive all the way up to the Sandy Bay if we wanted to play the games. I think there's a lot of people that uh, need that sort of relaxation. To be quite frank, I don't use it. Um, I, I, I use the poker machines as a relaxation away from other parts of my life. And uh, like most that go to the horse racing or the greyhounds or whatever they want to do, I mean, they, don't, they, they go there hopefully not thinking you're going to win every time you go there because you won't. And I know that, and uh, I just go there and I talk to other people. But I, I believe that, um, yeah, w w leave them as they are. No. Councillor Westwood. Thank you, Mayor. Um, I don't know that there's any suggestion that the state government won't be observing the five-week consultation period. Um, I'm not aware of any anything that indicates otherwise. Um, and I think, so I guess, you know, they've said... Specifically here in the minutes from the meet from the Premier's local government council meeting on the 6th of September, um, although the statewide partnership agreement between the state government and the local government sector has expired, the government continues as a matter of protocol to observe the five-week consultation period contained in that agreement. Um, so my reading of that is that we will be getting a five-week consultation period, and so therefore we don't need to um, lobby for something that may or may not happen that has already been determined that it will happen. Okay. Uh, there are there any other strong views that haven't been made already? <coughs> uh, let's just do the informal show of hands then. Uh, are you a, if you're a yes, can you just raise your hand? One. Two, uh, uh, 
Councillor Street, it, okay, I've got a, we've got a yes broadly, only two against, um, so we'll go be yes for that. And the deferral of draft future gaming bill, sorry, I won't be so sure other people might or might not want to speak. Councillor Cordova. Thanks, Mayor. Same as before, except to say that the SEIS um, report is really in-depth. It was la last released in, I think, March 2012, 2015, 2018, 2018. So they're every three years. Maybe I better ask one of the staff, how often is the SEIS? Ms. Stevenson, do you know the answer? It is more recent than 2015, um, but I can't recall the frequency. A question... Mr. Arnold, do you want to, Mr. Arnold might have some more info. Yeah, uh, three years, Samir, I understand it requires review, review every three years. And my question is, what is the, um, what might be the impact of, of allowing them to go early before the study is made available? Why is Legat so keen to make sure that we get the information before we? Well, it's, it's not Legat. It's um, been brought by. I think this is by Glenorchy City Council. It's brought it up as a notice of motion. Um, but I'm not sure we've got the, the answer. Yeah, you'd have to ask Glenorchy. Well, so th that's okay, man. Um, basically. I, I used to work at um, the Social Action Research Centre, Anglicare Tasmania, and so we spent all this time collecting all of the, all of the um, information, the facts, and the, and the personal stories of, I think, about 5,000 people who were personally affected by pokies. And one of the main uh, sources of reliable data that we used, of recent data that we used, was the SEIS, the Social and Economic Impact Studies. Um, to be able to make an informed decision without that information um, would be probably quite irresponsible, I think. But more importantly, if the cost of of waiting for it to come out is not long, as it appears to be. Um, it's going to be completed by the second quarter of 2021. And th there seems to me no reason why we would have to rush these things and, um, and try and rush it without the information. Let's just wait until we get the information. And so based on that, the deferral of draft future gaming bill, I, want, I will be voting yes because I want to wait until we have that SEIS report completed. Now the lights are on, uh, so in which case do you want to uh, raise your hand if you're a yes for this? Councillors Fox, Cordova, immediately, and if you're against this, please raise your hand. Sorry? Oh, okay. Well, it makes it hard. Uh, three, so you're three, four, one, two, three, and now against. So, right, no for that. Okay. Um, so, just looking for someone to move and second this. Moved by Councillor Loss, seconded by Councillor Westwood. So, the Council authorised the Mayor's regarding the voting at the upcoming Elgat general meeting as follows. Planning authorities, no. Future gaming legislation exposure draft, yes. And deferral of future gaming bill, no. All those in favour, please say aye. Those against... Motions carried unanimously. Okay, uh, 